Ever wonder why some real estate investors struggle to make any money and others are making a fortune? The answer to this question is not what you think it is, and it could change the game entirely. My real estate journey has been filled with lessons, a lot of them learned the hard way, and I want to share those with you today so you can be in a more successful position than I was when I started. Let's get into it. So I bought my first property in 2014 and I really had no idea what I was doing. We bought it from a turnkey real estate agency and it cash flowed about $500 a month and I thought I was doing great things, but I didn't have it all figured out. And a lot of real estate investors don't have it all figured out. Managing a portfolio of real estate is controlled chaos. And if you watch any of the big uh, real estate podcasts, like Bigger Pockets or Rob Belt or Grant Cardone, you can kind of see glimpses of the turmoil that's boiling just beneath the surface in all of their portfolios. I have five properties and I've seen a ton of it between busted pipes, furnaces, damaged showers, damaged garages, dishwashers, refrigerators, and terrible guests. Check out my one video where I show the worst Airbnb guests I ever had who caused over $26,000 worth of damage. All these results are not uncommon and they eat into your profits. It is not uncommon to see your cash flow for the entire year evaporate just like that. In a split second, from one phone call from your property manager, all the money that you've accumulated over an entire year with your property can disappear. And imagine if I'm seeing these issues with my small portfolio of five properties, what do you think people with hundreds of doors are seeing? Investing personally, I have been shocked by how much of the profits go out the door to the handyman, to the contractor, to the vendors and the service providers that go in there to fix something from your properties. One of my short-term rentals, it's actually a nice one, like a $1.3 million property, had the entire 2023 profit erased in December when I had to replace a well pump. In the states of Colorado, Florida, and California, people can't even get home insurance for their properties. You can't get permitting to construct. People are getting scammed by the contractors that they hire to do work on their properties. It is a very difficult environment to actually cash flow on a property. So with all that said, you might be wondering, why are people still buying real estate? Why do you want to still buy real estate? Why am I still buying real estate? And the answer is equity growth. Equity growth is the reason to buy real estate. It's really the combination between equity growth and leverage. So you get this loan on a property with next to no money and you have control over this asset that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then you're slowly repaying it over time with future dollars that are inherently worth less money due to inflation. And that whole period of time while you're repaying this loan, the property value is going up, either through forced appreciation of you adding square footage or doing work on the property or natural appreciation, just the demand for the asset increasing and the property values around you going up. And this equity growth is going to be multiples of what your cash flow number is going to be over time. So even though your cash flow may evaporate in an instant, that equity will not. So 2023 was a down market year for real estate. But if you follow the data firm CoreLogic, the average homeowner saw a 6.8% or about a 20K increase in the equity in their home in 2023. With that kind of rise in your equity growth, your home value would double within about 10 years. So in a 10 year period, you could double your home value with the amount of equity increase we saw in 2023, which like I said, was a down market. 
for real estate. And my personal portfolio has supported the fact that equity growth is much better than cash flow. The biggest step change I saw in my net worth was when we started investing in real estate and the housing market exploded during the pandemic. And it was all due to the equity growth. I mean, we had several properties under management and they were cash flowing, but it wasn't the huge step change in our net worth that we saw with the equity growth. So for me, I think about cash flow as just a means to hold on to a property. It's just the thing that allows you to hold on to the investment for a long period of time to actually allow that compounding of equity growth to take place and that wealth to be transferred to you. The cash flow is nice, but it's not the thing that is going to have the biggest change on creating generational wealth for you and your family. If you follow uh, Rob Bilt, who is another popular uh, real estate investor, he shows up on the Bigger Pockets uh, podcast and he has his own YouTube channel. His origin story is very similar to the one that I lay out in my video for starting over. He bought into a house at a reasonable price and his equity in that home went up significantly and that equity allowed him to buy into a property in California and then Rob built employed strategies to create cash flow and build equity in that property because he was in the California market and he spun that off into his own real estate empire. So he prioritized getting equity growth by buying in, in California and he built the cash flow. So picking the right market, picking the right circumstances to invest in is more important than just looking at the cash flow number because over a long enough timeline, the cash flow will actually increase with the property if you purchase right. So you might be wondering if this strategy even applies to our current market environment. And there's kind of a bias towards doom and gloom based on the 2008 housing crisis. But the combination of factors that led to that 2008 housing crisis were very unusual. So lenders were underwriting people who were barely qualified to get into the homes and the mortgages that they were assigning them. And then there was an overabundance of homes on the market. The supply was outpacing the demand by quite a bit. And none of those uh, factors are common in the housing market. In fact, the housing demand is so high right now that they're constructing like crazy all over the country and they cannot keep pace. So there's not really a plausible way we could see the supply outpacing the demand in the near future. And even though that 2008 crisis happened recently, if you look at the housing price index since 1900, there hasn't been a major market correction like that other than 2008 in the last 120 years. So in 2008, you get that steep drop down and then the housing market continued to go down into 2011 but it made a very sharp recovery since then. And if you held property through 2008 until now, you should have positive equity in your home. So it still was a positive investment, even with that huge market correction that happened in 2008, which as we can see from this housing price index graph is really unusual. I'm not saying that it's impossible to lose money investing in real estate. What I am saying is it's, unlikely for the market conditions that led to the housing market driving down the overall economy of the US into a recession. That combination of factors is exceedingly unlikely and it's only happened once in the last 120 years. There are natural market cycles where you'll see the price fluctuate down and come back up, but the overarching trend for real estate is up and to the right. If you buy and you hold one of these assets for 20 to 30 years, it's really hard to lose money. So if you're investing with that long-term growth mindset in mind, you want to be buying in places where people are moving to, where the population is growing and where the incomes are growing. So for the United States, that's 
to the south and to the east. People are moving to Texas and Florida and Atlanta and in some extent parts of California, but mostly south and east. So if you're buying in those states where you're seeing uh, an explosion in tech jobs, an explosion in the population and the income potential for the population, it's very likely that your housing investment is going to go up as well. Hopefully I didn't scare you off with my video today. And if you still want to continue your journey into real estate and financial independence, please like and subscribe so more people can find this information and share it with your friends and family so they can learn what you already know that real estate can make you wealthy. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.